My name is Tom Skarlinski. I'm a USDA identifier in the Port of Miami. I also specialize in identifying Thysanoptera. Well, it's just about time to go home and someone walks in and puts this down on your desk. So now we've got to figure out, well, what is this thing? We pretty much determined that it is a Thysanoptera. We're not sure well, what suborder is it from. So we'll, let's go ahead and check out the uh, terminal abdominal segment. We want to see is it conical? Or is it tube like, like a PVC pipe? Looks more conical to me. And we've got to get this thing done because we got to take take the kids to the movies. All right. So let's go ahead and pretty much establish that the tenth abdominal segment is conical. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, the four wings, and we'll. See if there's any venal, any veins on the four wings, or venal CD. That's nice rolls of CD on this, on the four vein and the second vein. Nice complete rolls. So if we had tubulifera, they wouldn't have any veins or very obvious veins in CD, and this does. So we're at Terebrantia. So let's go down to couplet number seven in our key. In our antennal segments three and four, are our sensory structures actually on the antennal segments or are they coming out of the antennal segments? We're on phase contrast. So let's go ahead and count our antennal segments. We want to, what we're interested in is three and four, so one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's go ahead and slide this over just a little bit. So let's go ahead and look at three and see if we can see that U-shaped or that horseshoe-shaped fort century cone. It's right there, loops right around. Usually that round base is pretty obvious. The actual fork sense cones a lot of times is difficult to see both branches. But you usually see that large basal section so it kind of gives you a, a when you're looking at a, a point of reference. Okay this is, I don't want to be looking down here or here. You'll find this large area where it's it's attached so we can find that. So we've pretty much determined that we have a an emergent forked sensory cones. So we're going to move on and we have the family Thripidae. So let's go ahead and move on to uh, couplet nine and uh, our legs are covered with transverse rows of microtrichia now let's go ahead to the four femora here, or the, is this four, and we're, we're a little bit, let's do this a little slower. Let's see if we can get one that's out in the medium a little bit more so, so we can get a clear shot of it. Well, let's try the tibia here. There seems to be some striations, they're almost longitudinal meaning going this direction, not necessarily transverse. And I don't see any presence of any microtrichia. So if we were we were looking it would be these microtrichia would run in rolls in transverse rolls meaning this way, not lengthways. So our legs don't have microtrichia. So we can move on to couplet ten. Is our now what we're going to look for is our metathoracic endofurc enlarged. So let's go ahead and move down to the metathorax. All 
All right, we found our end of Herka. It's right here. Let's see if I can. Maybe we'll take it out of phase and we can see it a little bit better. That's this area right here. And if, if you've seen the other videos of uh, the dendrothrypiny and also some of the panchetothrypines, these will extend all the way up into here. Obviously, it's not doing that. It's not extremely enlarged. It's small. And the terminal antennal segments on this, let's take a peek. They're not very acute. They're kind of, they end abruptly. They're rounded. Acute, again, being more like a CD, long and pointy. So let's, our, our metathoracic endophorca is not enlarged. It's not going into the mesothorax. And the terminal antenna of various shapes, but it's not long and acute. That's what we want to get home with this. So we go to couplet 11. Head and legs not reticulate, or head and legs usually with reticulate sculpture. Well, we already looked at the legs, and we can pretty much say these legs are not full of reticulate sculpture. There, are, there is some sculpture, sculpture, but it's more of a, of a longitudinal. They're really not creating any reticulations. That sculpture there, okay. And the head as well. We can see, yeah, hey, there is. We have some lines, some striation. There's some sculpture going on here, but it's not reticulate. So let's go ahead and you can see there's lines and a nice little um, transverse lines of sculpture. Whereas in a, a reticulate sculpture, obviously it's going to be enclosed little cells all in there. Okay. So uh, we don't have reticulate sculpture and our antennal segment is not long and acute. All right. And oftentimes the body is going to be smooth. The body, for the most part, being the abdomen. So there, it's fairly smooth. The abdomen. Here's some of the abdominal turgites, and there's some small sculpture, but it's not real heavy. And the terminal segment's not acute. So we have, we have the subfamily Thrypiny. So let's move on to bigger and better things. Okay. The abdominal turgites, of course, and this happened right at the end of the day, and we've got to go a lot further in the key. That's, that's, that's Murphy's Law, right? And you guys got to, we got to take our kid to the baseball game. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, abdominal turgites with rows of fine CD. You can see the turgites right here, and we'll go ahead And, and we have lines of sculpture, but there's not microtrichia on them. And I'm going to go ahead, on, let's go ahead and, and take a peek at what that looks like. Okay, you see these, what we're talking about in this couplet are these, these small microtrichia on the, abdom on the abdomen. And there's rows of them. I'm going to go ahead and focus in and out really slow so we can see it. Let's go ahead and I'll go over to this side. And we'll try to, they extend all the way, in this case, all the way on the anterior margin of the turgite. And they have this nice tracheal, microtracheal field on the um, the margins there. So we can go ahead and move on to couplet 13. All right, so we've, we've established our, our abdominal turgus have rows of fine microtrachea. Okay, and so we go to 13. The head with three pairs of ocellar CD, one is present. Okay, so what are these ocellar CD? This is ocellar CD right here. There's one actually somewhere in this area, and I'm not able to get it focused in. It's along this border, and that's actually 
number two. This is Ocellar CD3. And you see these ones right here, anterior of the anterior ocellus. They are ahead of it. That's Ocellar CD1. Okay? So Ocellar CD1 is present, and we have three pairs of Ocellar CD. Okay? Now, in the opposing couplet, head with two pairs of cellar CD. So what will happen in other, other genera, these CD anterior, ahead of the anterior cellus, are absent. You won't find them. You'll find an additional one here and one here. So in essence, there's just two pairs of cellar CD. Okay, in our unknown, we have three pairs. We're going to go ahead and go through the rest of the couplet. The tenidia of the abdominal turgite eight, anterior lateral of spiracle. Okay, anterior lateral. So let's go ahead on turgite eight. All right, so let's go ahead and count this. This is 10. Remember our cone. So here's 9. This one right here. And here's 8. That's this tergite right here. So what is this tenidia? This mysterious structure that we're supposed to find. Okay, if you see these little very small dashes right here in a line right here. All of these combined, this is called a tenidia. Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking at the position of this row of these very small, small structures, the tenidia right here, their location in relationship to the spiracle. Okay, so the couplet says that they're anterior lateral of spiracle. So here's our spiracle. It's anterior of it and it's lateral. Okay. The forewings with two complete rows of venal CD. Let's scoot back up to the four wings. And let's focus out a little bit. We can see that we have, which we did earlier when we were determining whether this was a terebrantia or a tubalifera, we pretty much just had already determined that, that it has a venal CD. But what now the question is, is it complete? Well, you can see there's a nice row a CD here in vein one, and then a nice row in vein two. Sometimes I like to do this. I'll go over and I'll say, well, wait a second. If I happen to ha be, I'm lucky enough that, that I'm able to get both wings out. You know, when you're making slides, you're not always going to, they're not going to be perfect. And you know, would like to always try to get one, one wing out there because they are diagnostically important. If you can get both wings out better yet. So I always try to like to double check and make sure, okay, am I right or am I seeing things on the other side? So we pretty much have a nice roll on vein one and another nice full row on vein two. So I'd say we're all right there. Okay, the antenna are usually eight seg with usually with eight segments. Again, usually. When you see usually that means there's exception to the rule. It's not unheard of. You might get a specimen with maybe six segments on one side, one antenna, antenna with six segments, the other side with seven or eight, or sometimes they're all kind of fused together because they never developed correctly. But thank goodness there's two. Sometimes both of them have deformities. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll count the antennal segments. 
antenna segment one. So we're, again, we're going to do it basically and go into the end of the to the antenna or apically. So we have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and focus this in. Seven, eight. So we have eight antenna segments. I feel like the count on Sesame Street. We have eight. <laughs> we have eight antenna segments. <laughs> okay, let's move on. It's getting late. So now we've determined we have eight antenna segments. The pronotum usually with long CD on the anterior and posterior margin. Some really long CD right there. Here's our anterior margin. Here's the anterior angle, margin, posterior angle, and posterior margin. We'll basically combine all this as our posterior margin. Nice long CD. And a, a good rule of thumb is they are much longer than your discal CD or the CD that are a smaller CD on the pronotum. As you can see they're they they they're obvious. They're twice three is sometimes as much as four times the length of the other smaller CD on the pronotal, on the pronotum here. And the point that we need to understand is that they're on the anterior margin and the posterior margin. So now we can go ahead. We know the head doesn't have two pairs of a cell CD. The tinnity of abdominal tur turgite 8 are medial of the spiracle. Let's take a look at the tinnitia medial. And it can show you pretty much, I can explain it on this, but then I'll go ahead and show you an example of what, what I'm talking about. In other words, you remember the tinnitia were in this area right here, anterior, lateral. What we're saying is medial, so you have the spherical, so they're in this area. They're going towards the midline, and they'll be found in this area. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Okay, let's go ahead and count on turgite 8. So we can always go, we know there's 10, 10 abdominal segments, so let's count backwards, 10, 9, 8. We can save some time. Remember, we got to get the kids to the baseball game. Okay, here's the example of being medial. This is our spiracle, this little area right here, and our tinnitia. This structure is right here, this line. And oftentimes these tinnitia, they will extend to the other abdominal turgites. They're not exclusively on turgite 8. You'll find them as far forward as, say, turgite 3 in some cases. Usually around 4 they end, depending on the genera, the genus or the species. But this is diagnostic. So we know that it's going towards the midline, this tinnitia. In our unknown, they were anterior. All right. Here's our first vein. We're going along the vein. And hey, wait a second. They, they forgot to grow there and here, too. So it's, it's yeah, this gap. It's a seedily challenged, I guess, we could call it. But if you remember our, our unknown that we're trying to get done, it has a complete row, and this doesn't. So our unknown, we had, we had long CD here, and here, and here, and here. But this one doesn't. This one only has them on the posterior margin of the of the of the of the pronotum. Okay, so we're 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 not even close to the opposing couplet. We're pretty much right on the nose, so we can move on to couplet fourteen. So let's go ahead. Pedestal of antennal segments three simple. Okay, what is the pedestal? We have antennal segment one, two, and three. Here's the base of three. It's this little area in between antennal segment two and three. 
and it's called the pedestal. Okay. So our question is, is it nearly parallel sided? So we look at the margins, the lateral margins, and it seems to be a little flanged out on the sides, but not tremendously. So it's nearly parallel. Let's go ahead and check our opposing couplet, our opposing character state. Pedestal antennal segment three, laterally expanded, mushroom or saucer shaped. So we're kind of saying, well, this is nearly parallel sided, but there was a little bit of, of uh, it was a little expanded on the sides. So let's go ahead. Notice the, uh, here we are again, antennal segment one, two, and three. You notice the pedestal, you come up there, it just shoots out laterally. And I, I say it is a, it looks like a, like a flying saucer was stuck in the middle of it. Like a saucer, or if there was a plate inside of it and it pushed the sides out. You notice how that it, it just flanges out on the pedestal. So that's what we're talking about. Okay, so here's an example of, of a pedestal that is uh, kind of like a button, a mushroom button. It's mushroom shaped. And you'll see how that pedestal goes out and looks just like a mushroom button. Now that's, these are, these are the two examples of saucer shaped and mushroom shaped on that pedestal. They are very diagnostic in the genus Frank Liniella. So a lot of times, in, and it takes a, a lot of, you have to look at a lot of these things to really get a feel for this, this character. It's, it is one of the more difficult characters in the genus, I believe. Um, we'll go ahead and let's go back and look at our our unknown and, and that almost looks a little mushroom shaped. I say that's that's that that is something that it's but it's closer to being nearly parallel sided. You get different extremes, but it's not it's not that extreme where it's flanged out. So we're going to go ahead and let's go with nearly parallel sided. All right, head prolonged anterior of compound eyes. Well. Go ahead and look at the coconut here, I mean the head. And if you notice, the right in this area here, your compound eye extends to here, and the head is about right there, not much further. So it's about the same distance, okay? Is it jutting out this area way out in front of the eyes? I would say no. So let's go ahead. I'll show you an example of one that has that character. Okay, we don't want to go too far on the on the venter, but here, if you notice, here's our anterior ocellus, posterior. Here's our the omitidia and our compound eyes. If you draw a line right here, you'll notice that the head juts forward and uh, oftentimes the there's there are species of the genus Franklinella that inhabit grasses and they usually those that inhabit the grasses they tend to have this uh, pronounced um, extension of the head like that and I guess uh, so you might, it, I would imagine that it is because they are in the sheaths of the grasses and they're burrowing around down in there. It helps them to um, move around. So I guess we can pretty much say that, that our, our, uh, the head's not prolonged anterior of the compound eyes. So we can move on to compound eyes with two to four anterior lateral f facets twice the diameter of other facets. Or the compound eyes with anterior anterior lateral facets not enlarged. So let's go ahead and we'll take out our unknown. Let's go ahead and look at the eyes. 
So we're kind of talking about the anterior lateral. Okay, so we're, 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 we're talking in this, so anterior and then lateral out in this area. You see these ones that are pigmented a little bit? And what we're saying are these two times or twice the size of these. So these are about the same. They might be a little larger, but they're not, not dramatically or uh, substantially larger than the other facets or omatidia of the compound eye. Okay? As an, an example of, of one that has this, here's an example. You see the anterior lateral facets here? Look how large they are. And here's our normal facets. And they're nearly twice the size, these ones. They're huge. Look at some of these ones. Now this is on the venter. And believe it or not, when you see this type of Franklin yellow in alcohol, you can actually, under a stereoscope, these things will jump out, those very large facets. So I always take a look at things, at the facets before I even slide mount it a lot of times. You can, you can get a certain amount of diagnostic work done just in the alcohol in certain things. Obviously, like things like the pedestal, you can't do that. Okay, so we're back to our unknown. Pretty much established that we've got a fairly parallel sided antennal segment three pedestal. Our head is not pronounced significantly anterior of the, the compound eyes. And our facets, our omatidia and the anterior lateral portion of the compound eye are not substantially enlarged. Two times enlarged than the other omatidia. So we can move on to number 17. Well, cellar CD3, we talked about that earlier. Where is it? Is it within the ocellar triangle? Okay, what is this? The ocellar triangle. Sounds like the Bermuda Triangle or something. But it's this area right here. If you go from this ocellus to this one and you draw a tangent there to there, and then the outside from there to there, this is your ocellar triangle region. So are the base of these CDOs of ocellar CD3? The question is, are, is it within this triangle? They are within this triangle. Are they anterior of the posterior ocellus? Just slightly. Here's our posterior ocellus, or just slightly. So they're within this triangular area, and are just anterior of it. Okay. Comb turgite eight complete. All right. So the comb is on turgite eight. So let's go ahead and move down south here. All right. Comb turgite eight complete. Yep. Yeah. What does that mean? That's you see these little upside down pyramids right here. These bases, then these larger bases. This is the comb. Can you imagine just a regular comb? If you were to cut all this out, you have your own. You have a comb. So what we're asking are there tines or these? They're kind of like a. Um, they're like an enlarged microtrichia, actually, a microtrichone. And is it complete, or is, are these absent medially? That's what we're looking for. Well, it is complete. And it, what we're going to look at, then, are each the length of these, in general, the length of these equal to, about equal to the distance between here. So the length here to here. So see they're going to be equal to maybe a little smidge longer, but it pretty much you could turn it around, you can fit it in this, turn it sideways and you could fit it in there. Okay? 
So those are fairly short, and that's what we're looking for. They're not really long. They don't extend down into here and almost wavy like and very long. Okay. Metal nodal campaniform sensilla present. And that's going to be these little round structures right here on the metanotum. Meet the metanotum. There's one, two, and they're usually in this area. That's not always, but, but sometimes they can be in other areas of the metanotum, but they tend to be in the posterior third of it. Sometimes they're present, in other species they're absent sometimes. So they're present in ours. And the bases of the sense cones, antennal six, much narrower than the width of antennal segment seven. Let's go ahead and look at the base of the sense cone on antennal six. Here we have, we know we've already, know that we have eight antennal segments, so we have the eighth one here, seventh, sixth. So here's our sense cone on antennal segment six. This is the base, this area right here. The question is, is the base, the width of this area right here, is it wider than or equal to the width of this antennal segment? I would say no. Okay. So it appears that we've got Franklin L. occidentalis. But before we go ahead and we run out the door to take our kid to the softball game, we want to make sure. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the opposing couplet. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the opposing character states. For Franklin L. Occidentalis, we said that the Ocellar CD3 were within, within this triangle, and they were slightly anterior of the posterior ocella. In this couplet, the ocellar CD3 is between the posterior ocella. So we have the posterior ocella here. Here they are. And they're also within the triangle, but they're, they're definitely between. Okay. Turgite 8, absent medially. The comb is absent medially. So remember our comb? on the, what we think is Franklin, Franklin yellow occidentalis, are unknown, soon to be known. It was complete. Wow. This was a discounted comb. It's, it's missing in the middle. So we don't have all of these, these little tines going all the way across. So it's incomplete medially. It kind of looks like somebody got hungry and chomped into the middle of it. So, metanodal campaniform sensilla, sensilla absent. Well, we saw what present was, so we might as well see what absent is. Okay. So, you see them? You better not, because they're not there. So, we don't have any sensilla. So, let's go ahead and move up to our segment six, and let's go ahead and look at that sense cone. We basically we want to look at, is that sense cone really wide at the base? Well, let me go ahead and see if I can center this a little bit. Uh, okay, right there. Right here is our base. It starts from about right here to here. The whole sense cone is kind of short. Did you see how wide that base is? Now let's look at the width of antennal segment 7. The base is wider than this. So this is obviously, this isn't western flower thrips. You, you remember our, our sense cone 
on the western flower thrips or what we think is the western flowers was much narrower. So we're ready to get out of the office. We have Franklin L. Oxidant Talus. We can give the good news to whoever turned it in. And we do have Franklin L. Oxidant Talus. Thank you very much.